Today I'm going to talk to you about 10 wild edibles that grow in the late spring and early summer. I'll be covering plants that grow in western North Carolina during this period. These distinctive polypore mushrooms smell strongly of watermelon and cucumbers. They're known by many common names including dryad saddle and pheasant back. Dryad saddle grow as a shelf mushroom on hardwood trees, stumps, and logs. This mushroom is very easy to identify with its dark scales, contrasting with its cream color. It also has very unique large honeycomb shaped pores on the underside. This mushroom fruits primarily in the mid spring to early summer, but you can also find it fruiting at other times of the year as well. This mushroom also has a long stalk to hold up the mushroom because it can get very heavy as it gets large. There are no lookalikes to this mushroom and no other mushroom smells quite like it. It is best to collect the new tender growth of this mushroom because as the mushroom matures it gets tough and chewy and if you find a really big dryad saddle you can cut out the outer ring because the outer ring will be the new growth and the new growth is more soft and tender than the inner growth. While the tougher parts of this mushroom might not be great to eat, they serve as a good mushroom broth base. This star-shaped plant is one of my favorite tubers and it has a refreshing and crunchy taste. These plants are known as Indian cucumber because of how similar the bulb tastes to regular cucumbers. Indian cucumber has a tall stem that has 5 to 12 leaves that form a star pattern. As it matures, the plant will form a second layer of three leaves above the first layer. And even later into the season, it'll form flowers above that, and some berries. The rhizomes can be dug up and are edible raw or cooked. They're great as a trail nibble or added to a salad. So Indian cucumber largely reproduces underground by creating secondary rhizomes. So continually harvesting from the same colonies over and over again will probably deplete these populations. So it's better to transplant these plants and start your own colony. You also want to distinguish Indian cucumber from mayapple because mayapple also grows in similar areas and has a star-shaped leaf pattern. Mayapple's leaves, stem, and root are toxic. This vibrant orange shelf mushroom is common in the summer months. It's known as chicken of the woods because of how similar it tastes to chicken. I often find these polypores growing as early as May in western North Carolina. This mushroom is one of the foolproof four and is one of the easiest mushrooms to identify in the forest. The standard chicken of the woods is bright orange on the top and has small yellow pores on the underside. Chicken of the woods is a thick shelf mushroom with overlapping brackets. The common variety grows on hardwood trees, especially oak trees. White poured sulfur shelf mushroom is another variant of chicken of the woods. The underside of this mushroom is white in color rather than yellow. And the mushroom is a little bit more peach color than orange and tends to grow at the base of trees. All varieties of chicken of the woods taste delicious. They can be a little dry, so make sure to cook them with a lot of butter or sauce. I really like to cook them in barbecue sauce. They really soak up and absorb all the flavor. This arching plant is biblical for its starchy rhizome that has little seals that resemble the biblical seal of Solomon. This plant often grows alongside another arching plant called false Solomon seal, whereas false Solomon seal has flowers that extrude out the ends of the arching plant and no flowers underneath. However, the true Solomon seal has dangling flowers called plumes. The young shoots of true Solomon seal can be eaten like asparagus and the potato-like rhizome can be eaten raw or it can be boiled for about 20 minutes. As an herb, Solomon seal is great for helping weak joints and muscles. It's also great for lung health and digestion. The rhizome can be roasted and used for tea, and it's great when you've been overworked and overstressed. When you're digging up the plant, you want to go from the backside and carefully dig the rhizome out. This is wood nettle, a cousin of stinging nettle. Wood nettle can grow in shady, fertile soils deep in the forest. While stinging nettle comes out early in the spring, wood nettle waits a little bit and comes out a month or two after. Wood nettle can be distinguished from a stinging nettle with its alternate leaves. Stinging nettle has opposite paired leaves. Wood nettle's petioles, the stems that come off the main stem, are often longer, and wood nettle is often more top heavy with most of its leaves clustered towards the top of the plant than stinging nettle. Wood nettle has teardrop shaped leaves with jagged edges. Despite their differences, both stinging nettle and wood nettle both <laughs> have a strong sting, and some say that wood nettle has a slightly stronger sting. As wood nettle matures, it can become pretty tall from two to four feet. You can use gloves, knives, or scissors to harvest this plant to avoid getting stung. If you do happen to get stung, it's not that painful. It just creates a little welt on your skin. But if you get stung over and over again or you roll in it, it is going to really hurt. I like to harvest the plants by cutting the upper part of the plant off and leave about two to three leaves below that so the plant will be able to regenerate and keep living. The sting hairs are deactivated by heat, so it's recommended that you saute, steam, or dehydrate these plants before eating them. If you want to practice some bushcraft, the inner strands of wood nettle 
can be made into a really strong cordage that is up to 50 times stronger than cotton. This small clover-like plant is the sweet tart of the forest. This plant is known as wood sorrel and it has delicious tart and sour taste. This is not a substantial food, but it's more of a trail nibble to enjoy along your height. It's best not to consume a ton of these plants anyway because they're very high in oxalic acid. Oxalic acid can result in kidney stones if eaten too much, but it's also produced by our body. And oxalic acid is also very high in normal foods like bananas, chocolate, and nuts. If you're consuming a lot of these plants, try combining them with yogurt or raw milk because the calcium will bind with the oxalic acid and also the probiotics will help break down the oxalic acid in the stomach. There are a ton of different coral mushrooms in the forest and they range wildly in color. Some are edible, some are inedible, and others are poisonous. I wanna focus on my favorite edible coral, the crown-tipped coral. This coral mushroom is distinguished by its crowns or fingers that appear on top of each stem. This coral mushroom differs from others because it grows only from decaying wood and not from the ground. The crown tip corals have a much looser structure than some of the other lookalikes like Ramiria. They have a white to off-white cream color and they're easy to find in abundance. They're also pretty brittle and fragile. These mushrooms can be sauteed but they cook down pretty quickly so I like to add them to soups and they'll retain their structure better and they're also complement the texture of like a ramen really well. Red clover is a common flower that you can find growing in fields and lawns. Red clover is easily identified by its cluster of tubular red flowers. The flowers are accompanied by one or two sets of clover leaves. These clover leaves contain white arrow-like markings called chevron, and the red clover stems are hairy and hollow. Flowers, leaves, and roots of this plant are all edible. Flowers are my personal favorite and have a slight sweet taste to them. These plants have a very high percentage of protein for a plant. The red clover are preferable over white clover. There is some research that says that white clover might be toxic, but just in the southern states. I like to use the flowers in particular to top salads, pizza, and all sorts of dishes. Red clover tea is a great way to use the plant as well. Red clover is high in vitamins and minerals like calcium, magnesium, vitamin C, and potassium. Red clover has a ton of health benefits. It helps the lymphatic system, promotes healthy skin, and endocrine function, to name a few. This vibrant UFO-shaped mushroom is revered for its medicinal properties. It's known as reishi mushroom, and the specific type that I find on the East Coast is Ganoderma suge, hemlock reishi, which as the name suggests, grows almost exclusively on hemlock trees. In Western North Carolina, the nodes of these mushrooms start developing as soon as late April to early May, and these nodes will form like white little puffballs on the sides of hemlock trees and stumps. As the mushroom matures, it'll start to form red little antlers, and it'll fan out into these kidney-shaped shells. The adolescent reishi will have layers of different colors, with red towards the base, then yellow and orange, and the outer rim of this mushroom will be a doughy white color. This outer rim of white new growth is actually the only part of reishi that is edible. You can trim it off and cook it up with butter and it's quite tasty. By the summer reishi will be mature and it'll be one solid color, usually a darker red color. Reishi has this distinctive waxy sheen that covers the top of the mushroom. The underside of reishi will be white with tons of microscopic pores. This mushroom is a polypore so it won't have any gills or anything like that. The key to finding reishi is locating hemlock groves. Now hemlock trees are evergreen trees with flat needles. On the underside of hemlock needles, you'll find two silver stripes. So if you've found reishi in a particular hemlock forest before, chances are you'll find it in that forest again the next year. Reishi forms on mostly dying and dead hemlocks, including stumps and logs that are covered in moss. So while the new growth of reishi is edible, it's largely a medicinal plant, and what are some of its health benefits? The mushroom is anti-inflammatory, it helps with autoimmune disorders, it is also great for alleviating fatigue, elevating mood, and calming the nervous system. Reishi extracts also protect against air pollutants like car exhaust. Reishi has been shown to block car exhaust molecules from entering into our body cells. The air pollutants will stay on the outside of the cell, but they can't get in. Reishi is one of my favorite general 
herbs and I take it almost every day now. I also have an extract of reishi, chaga, and lion's mane that's available on my Etsy shop. Ramps are a pungent spring ephemeral plant, meaning these plants come out in the mid spring to take advantage of the forest with no leaves so they can get the full sunlight. And then as soon as the leaves fill out, they start to disappear. The word Chicago comes from a Native American name for ramps that roughly translates to stinky onion. Ramps have relatively smooth waxy leaves that are light green in color. The leaves have an onion like bulb that stays underground all year long. Ramps form mostly in pairs with two leaves and occasionally three. These plants often form in large, massive patches if it's a healthy population. These plants are at risk of being over harvested over time if the proper techniques aren't being used. When harvesting these plants in the mid to late spring, I like to harvest one leaf from each plant and leave most of the colony alone. And then I'll come back to these ramp patches in midsummer to spread the seeds and expand the population. Ramps can be eaten raw, but I find they're best when they're cooked just slightly. Ramps can be pickled, cooked with eggs, pasta, and even pizza. But if you do eat them, you will be smelling for days. In damp regions, they can form close to a toxic plant lookalike, false hellebore. False hellebore has a similar structure to cabbage. False hellebore leaves have ridges called parallel veins that are much more distinguished than the ramps little wrinkles. You also want to distinguish ramps from other poisonous lookalikes like Lily of the Valley. 